part two and um, we just baked the 8 minute occlusion it's time to really start texturing uh, what I'm doing now is I'm opening the uh, normals of the wheels again because uh, I'm gonna start with the wheels uh, this video will make the complete wheel texture so that means finishing up the normal map I need to change it a little bit and uh, then doing diffuse, specular, reflect, glossiness, etc. One thing I'm doing here now is a um, slight problem. It's a little bit of a mistake from my side. The uh, the tire tread pattern that was placed on um, the normal map, I collapsed that. Um, I lost the black and white texture I had for that. And you could say, why don't you just look for it again? Well, I transformed it actually. It was a little bit scaled, it was a little bit edited. So um, here's the same texture I used, and I'm just going to recreate it. Um, so I can also use it for my diffuse. First off, I'm uh, changing the downloaded texture to uh, use maximum contrast, use the full range from black to white. Um, if you're creating something as a bump map or a mask or something, you always want to use the uh, the full range. Then I'm going to scale it up so that uh, it fits in here nicely. And one thing, one problem is if I scale it up, then it gets blurry and I get um, these these jagged edges because of uh, aliasing. So I'm trying to fix it a little bit with Sharpen. But if I zoom in, oh, that's still not everything. Um, also, there's some sort of red and green fringe around there. So I'm just going to redo them. I just created a new layer. And I'm using my simple brush tool. I'm going to click and shift click uh, over the lines of... Uh, the existing lines of the texture to simply repaint the uh, the pattern on a new layer. Also, I'm reducing the opacity of uh, the layer below so I can clearly see what I'm doing. And um, just setting my brush settings to something usable. So I'm just changing the brush brush size depending on, on how thick the line is that I'm drawing over. Uh, four for the smaller ones. Like so, um, and these straight lines downwards, um, I'm, I'm using shift all the time. If you click somewhere and shift click, it draws a straight line between those two points. If you hold shift before you start drawing, it will draw in um, straight lines or in 45 degree lines. Um, I'm just using it for straight lines. So those straight lines from top to bottom, I just held shift, clicked, and then moved my brush down and it paints in a perfectly straight line. Um, so I've almost got everything here. I still have this little part to recreate it to five pixels. There we go. Back to four. And I think I have everything here. So now I just duplicate this little part, merge it down, then duplicate the merge once again. And I'm duplicating this with the, uh, the hotkey. Some people might not know this. Hotkey Control J. So Control J duplicates current selection or layer to a new layer. And that's an extremely handy shortcut. Um, the first two years I worked with Photoshop, I didn't know th about that one. And when I found that out, I use it all the time in Photoshop. Um, because many times you just want to split off a selection to a new layer. And if you duplicate it or just um, copy paste, then it will um, change the alignment. It will place it uh, somewhere else in the center of your screen, whatever. Uh, and Control J doesn't do that. So I just created this this pattern here, and uh, what I want to do now is uh, make it fully tiling. Um, I just snapped off a little part there. I'm going to move this down, and I'm going to try and align these perfectly. I have to move them on top of each other so that um, I get a nice tiling pattern here. Also note that I... Uh, I hid the previous layer that was my uh, my downloaded source texture. I'm just completely recreating it. Um, especially when you're creating something like a pattern, it might be a good idea to do that. Also, uh, just a hint. Um, might want to do that as a vector also, uh, the pattern. But I'm not doing it here. Anyway, what I'm doing here now, it's also important um, since I want my texture to tile uh, along the borders of that UV island. I'm rendering the UV template because I, I just can't tell uh, how far it reaches. So I copy that as a JPEG. Um, I 
and then I duplicate this little part and now I'm scaling it so that my perfectly tiling piece fits exactly into that um, the UV island uh, once I do that I duplicate it so that I have a really long stretch and now I can just shift this up and down and the tiling will always work why am I shifting it up and down so I can have it um, how would I say this a little bit of um, of padding around the the up and well the um, the lateral stretches of the of the tire pattern so that I don't get any um, mid map bleeding or problems so I have to hide the old um, layer and now what I want to do now is I want to blend this normal map over the other one well first I need to delete the edges around it yeah, so I have my selection here And of course, I did the same stupid mistake again. I um, forgot to save the black and white pattern. You need to save the black and white pattern to be able to use it for your diffuse. And one thing I want to change also is uh, I want to have a little fade on the edges of the texture so it doesn't um, stop so abruptly at the, at the sides. Uh, I'm using a, a little mask there. Uh, but the mask doesn't seem to work very well, so I'm just going to use... I'm going to paint manually on the mask. So I'm picking a white soft brush and painting over the edges while holding shift so I can draw in straight lines. That's a little bit too much, something like that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So I duplicated that layer from height to normals, delete the old one again. And now I need to blend this over. Uh, and if you want to blend normal maps on top of each other, you have to use a special method. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to record a macro. And I'm creating a new macro set custom and I'm calling the action normal map blend. And because it's always the same action and it's boring. So you go to levels, pick blue, set the right one to 128, then choose blend mode overlay and that's it. So you just have to set the blue levels to uh, a maximum of 128 output and then set the blend mode to overlay. But if you have to do that like, I don't know, um, five times in, in, in five minutes, then you want to make an action for that. So you just save some time. Okay, so I'm masking that again, saving this as a TGA. And you saw it jump a little bit, but I think this looks better. It's not as blurry, it's sharper, it's more defined, uh, it's just done a little bit cleaner. The only thing I think I should change is it should uh, stick out at the edges a little bit more. It seems a little bit too, too slim, the pattern. So I'm selecting both layers. And I'm using uh, transform to stretch the texture a little bit. So there we go. It just has to be a little bit wider. Saving that again as a TGA. Yeah, and I think that's better. It makes more sense if the uh, if the pattern goes slightly over the edge of your uh, of your model. If you're not sure about that, just look at reference, look at photos to see how, um, what it looks like in real life. Okay, so uh, normals are finished now. Um, I had to do that because it's important. You'll see I need to use that black and white pattern for the diffuse. So I create a new, to, so a few new folders, one for normals. Uh, then I create another one, diffuse, and one special overlays. And special overlays is just for me to dump stuff like alien occlusion in there. Sometimes it's stuff like... a sort of specular highlight layer. The idea is the special overlays folder is a few layers that I will use on um, both diffuse, specular, maybe even reflection, glossiness. Those are just shared layers. I don't want to duplicate them all the time. So they're, they're one, uh, one set that sits on top. So in my diffuse, I just, uh, I'm using this pattern here that I created. And this is the reason why I want to I keep that. I'm using the pattern and I'm placing a blend mode around it, an outer glow. The idea is that these, um, the, the, the little blocks of the pattern, they stick out and um, they touch the ground a lot and their edges will wear more than uh, the center of those 
you know, those little cells of the pattern. And if the edges of rubber wear more, that means that it'll discolor slightly more and they'll turn into a lighter color. So um, that's why I'm using this black pattern with an outer glow around it. It just tends to uh, simulate the look of uh, a little bit of a worn rubber pattern. Also, since it's rubber, I'm throwing a, uh, a noise over it, just a new layer, a heavy noise, set it to blend mode overlay, and then set the opacity to 7%. Um, little mark, you might not be able to see all the subtleties I put in this with this video because the compression is um, uh, it's, yeah, it's a compressed video, so it's not full quality. Sometimes I might be doing really subtle things and you might not be able to tell, especially with this dark stuff. So now I'm creating a mask to mask the rubber and the metal areas because I have rubber as well, uh, rubber tires as well as a metal rim in here, and I'm masking these off from each other. So uh, I'm also changing the colors. I have two base colors. I have uh, dark gray, uh, sort of blackish. Not, not. Don't pick entirely black because you can't get any any uh, shading in there. Then, uh, and I have um, light gray for the um, for the rims. So one thing I have to do is I have to. Uh, fix the problems on the amine occlusion map uh, and I see some splotches here and I remember from the rim that there were uh, these black spots that shouldn't really be there so I'm, I'm painting these out I'm just using clone stamp oh, there we go and there's some darker areas in there I have to paint those out also Clone stamp is really nice to fix amine occlusion uh, because there might be some slight noise in there, and you can you can keep it. If you paint with a solid color, you could use some of the noise that lose some of the noise that's in the amine occlusion. Now we're fixing that edge. Okay. Uh, some slight problems here that I'm fixing also. I don't know what these dark splotches are, but I think I go. That's better. All right. So um, I forgot the center of the rim there. I still have to have to add that to the uh, to the gray part. And now, what I realized is that um, the part I just erased is actually the part that should keep those splotches. It's the other one at the top right, not the one at the bottom left. Um, I have to remove the splotches here, not on the other one. So I'm just picking, taking back my, my old image occlusion layer, saving the parts I edited, and um, overriding, saving the parts I edited that I should keep, and overriding the ones that should be reset again. So that's why it's a good idea to have some separate files so you can go back to your old versions. I mean, it's Photoshop. You can just combine layers and fix the parts that you messed up. So that's better. Um, reason for that is the part at the top right is not uniquely unwrapped, while the one at the center left is unique, uniquely unwrapped. So the, the dark splotches there uh, match, while the ones at the top right don't match. So now I want to do the um, the mask for the for the center of the rim. There we go. Make it light. And we'll, we want to keep that little spot there. Okay, so now I'm creating this uh, little layer, which I think is important. Tire color differences. What it does is I'm going to create some color differences in the actual tire texture. And um, even though the the rubber might seem like it's a uniform color, there are really some subtle color differences in there. I talked about the the outer glow I used to simulate the edge wear on the um, on the rubber. I uh, I want to do the same thing. Uh, well, I want to do similar things for a lot of, of the rest of the the tire texture. We get subtle color variation in there that suggests tension, that suggests wear, uh, that should suggest some shading. Um, so one thing I did is a, a black. Uh, darkening in the center of the rim because that's uh, near the tire and um, it'll be a darker color because it's less worn a little bit more shadow will fall there and it just sees the less the least stress of all parts of the tire because it's just close to the rim and never touches the ground 
the uh, the outer edges of the tire they will see more wear because well when the car turns there's more stress on them there will be more sun there so uh, the uh, that part will will lighten more and um, so that's why I'm painting these subtle color differences also another reason is it's always a good idea to make the the edges of objects so the corners the outer parts a little bit lighter so you can catch a little bit more specular there and suggest some uh, some lighting um, so I'm gonna test out the diffuse map for the first time yeah they need to turn off these these shiny options um, I'm turning on self-illumination and what this does is I see the tire completely without shading and my opinion is if you can make a texture work without any shading reflection specular anything at all then uh, it'll work it'll work just as well maybe even better with shading normal maps whatever so uh, especially if I want to if I want to get a really good texture I just turn on self illumination and judge my texture like that so I noticed that there's this ugly uh, light edge at the center there and that I have to fix that. It's better, but it's still not entirely done. Oh, I didn't save it. Uh, yeah, there we go. I just moved my PSD, so I have to open it again. Yeah, that looks better, but uh, there's still some lighter spots, and they these seem to be on the. Uh, the, that circular part of uh, the rim there. So I'm just going to pick my clone stamp again, paint over that, and clone stamp isn't really working because it's it's uh, it's a circular motion I have to do. And clone stamp only works with uh, horizontal or vertical movements. So I'm actually using paintbrush here, um, picking some colors, and uh, then I'm just going to paint over those uh, those lighter spots. So going around in a circular motion. And saving that as a TGA again. Always use TGA, don't use the PSD. It's just way too slow, it hogs max down, um, uses way too much memory. Be safe, use TGA when you preview textures with a, with a shader. So it's still not fixed, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select this center part and scale it up a little bit so that um, the darker edges get stretched more towards the outside and the light edges are stretched away. But, um, and I'm doing that on my main occlusion layer. One, one problem is the, the center hubcap part with the circle around it. Um, I don't want to stretch that because it's not going to align with my normal map anymore. So once again, using my default uh, ambient occlusion map, I open that again cut out the part I want to keep um, and then delete the rest and I'm just going to merge that back over so there we go fixed again I hope you understood what I did there maybe just look at it again uh, a little bit slower uh, and just a smart way of uh, of fixing um, problems with your ambient occlusion map alright so I'm trying to get this to match up a little bit more. Because I'm seeing some slight seam problems with the uh, with that texture there. So I turn on specular. What I'm doing now is I'm going to try and match the the overall specular level and glossiness of the rubber. Um, just so that when I start creating my um, my specular map, I, this is the sort of thing I need to aim for. And uh, if you, if you ask me, what the most important thing is about uh, a tire texture, um, it's getting all those subtleties right, getting enough subtlety in your diffuse, getting the subtle specular, the subtle glo glossiness just right, and that really sells it as a, a rubber tire. If you get it too shiny, if you make it too, um, whatever, uh, too sharp in specular, it's, it's not going to work. So another color difference I want is there's a slight bulge on the side of my tire. 
and um, the slight bulge is because there's just a little bit more stress on the on the rubber there there's more tension on it uh, might be that the tread part is reinforced and then where the rubber sides is not reinforced anymore on the inside it just bulges outward a little bit so I used a circular selection with a stroke on that that means it's just going to use the brush uh, your current selected tool along the well not the current selected tool it's just going to stroke the selection and I blur that and then I start adjusting the uh, yeah wait I'm just going to have to change my yeah, I, I, so I created the the outside part, um, that little lighter ring. Uh, another color difference that's important. And now I want to try and get my um, my Firestone logo on the diffuse. The problem is I did the same stupid mistake here. I uh, got rid of the black and white texture, and I'm just testing the X normal filter to go back to uh, a black and white version. But most of them look like crap. This is just too much noise in there. I can't use this. Um, I'm really looking for the right one, but this is just unusable. Just garbage that is being generated here. Um, let's see if I can do it with brightness contrast. That might work too. Then use magic wand to delete some parts. So the tolerance lighter, no, say so to one. Let's take the insides. Ugh, this really isn't working. It's annoying me. Um, this looks like shit. So. <laughs> And excuse excuse me for the for the uh, the profanity, but it looks it looks really bad, so I'm not gonna do it. Um, I don't even have the texture saved. I mean, the warped bent one, which I use 3D Studio Max for, I don't have it anymore. So uh, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna ignore that part and leave it for purely for the normal, which isn't the best thing to do, but I think I can get away with it. Okay, so next part is uh, the tread pattern at at the top here. Uh, I didn't save the black and white one for this one either. But that's not such a problem because they're just straight lines. So each line, I just use the. Uh, there's a selection tool that selects entire um, uh, entire lines of pixels, and I just use it to mark each one out as a three-pixel uh, black line. Then I delete the parts I don't need, duplicate it to a new layer, and I'm applying, applying the same layer styles as I did with my rear tire texture. Just adjusting it slightly because it looked a little bit too strong. Uh, reducing the fill rate a little bit. Okay. And then I want to do the same thing where, where it meets the rim. I want to paint a little bit darker. And I'm doing all that on tire color difference. And making the part that that meets the road a little bit lighter there we go some some really slight color differences in there I mean a simple thing like that can make it work but you have to remember it has to be subtle it has to be just the right tints that you want to do there so yeah I'm really liking how this rubber is starting to look especially with the uh, the correct specular values it's starting to look nice Okay, so um, now that we have all my basic subtle color variations down, I'm going to start adding some dirt. Uh, I always add slight dirt, even though it's it's something that's supposed to be clean. I never make something perfectly clean. And I just load up the E3D brushes. You can uh, get those from uh, their uh, their Nexian texturing DVDs, and they're really cool because uh, you can just paint some uniform uh, grunge and noise with it. So um, I'm looking for first of all the correct or ordering of my layers and then I create a layer tire dirts tire dirts one because I'm probably gonna do multiple ones and I might just brush over it with this splotchy brush uh, just creating some uniform 
uh, type of dirt. I was doing multiple kinds. These are just like sort of smaller splotches all over it. Um, I'll do different ones later on, but I just want to combine some different types. So now I pick this bigger one, which is more, I say more solid. Make a new layer, tired dirts too, and then just paint these more cloudy uh, dirt patterns. Also note how I, I'm painting with 32% flow, and I'm even reducing the layer opacity to something like 50-60%. Subtlety, subtlety, subtlety is really key here. You don't want to put these on with a lot of contrast and everything. And the diffuse, you want to keep things subtle. Uh, you can really ruin something if you just put too much visual grunge and noise on it. So yeah, the noise is, is looking okay here. It might be a little bit difficult to see again with the compressed video, but uh, should should come across. Um, we're going to use that again for the for the specular, which we'll get to later on. So I'm just checking it from all sides, seeing if it works, trying to judge it. Uh, yeah. So right now I'm just going to look at some reference pictures, if I'm not missing something. Um, some cool detail, some type of dirt or something, whatever. Helps going back to your reference, just to be sure. That one was interesting. It had some lighter splot splotches on it. This one is it has red in the wheels. Maybe I should try that later on. Hmm. I think the outer glow should be a little bit stronger, a little bit wider, so it just becomes more obvious. You know, another reason to do this is um, brings out the specular highlights on those edges a lot more. Uh, it's good for contrast. So um, I'm painting a little bit more dirt, tire dirts three. Uh, yeah, and that's what I talked about. These are those uh, light splotches. And painting them over really, really subtle. I'm using a, a tablet here also. I might not have mentioned this, but maybe you could have guessed. I'm using a, a Wacom tablet with pressure sensitivity. It's an, uh, an Intuos 3, A5 size. Uh, and this sort of stuff, you can't do that without a tablet. Uh, especially for texturing, I recommend that you invest in something like this. Even a small bamboo is good to start with. Uh, also, I model with it, so best piece of hardware that I've invested in for, for a long time. Um, so anyway, back to saving. Let's see what my grunge looks like. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay. Um, I think we're nearing completion with this with this diffuse. Maybe some small tweaks left. Maybe some color differences. Like I'm thinking that in in the center here, the the color difference here should be a little bit larger. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's check it out with the renewed color differences. Or maybe I was making it a little bit too subtle there. Um, a little bit more difference didn't hurt. Okay, so I'm thinking now that that center part of the hubcap and the sort of chrome, chrome sphere type of thing there, it needs to. Uh, Needs to have a little bit of a lighter color. You know, it's hard to see here, but the rubber looks almost perfect. Just, just the right amount of noise, just the right color, just the right amount of dirt. 
Um, I'm really happy with that. So now I have to do some more, uh, some different parts. Um, well, maybe the the sides are a little bit too uh, too strong still. And once again, it's even even for me, it's a little bit difficult to see with this compressed video now that I'm recording the sound, but just so subtle. And what I want to fix here is is there was this little scene there, um, which is hard to see, but it's not so so hard to fix. I just had to change the values a little bit. Uh, so if you ever if you get seams, I don't really believe in crazy solutions to fix seams like I don't know projection painting whatever. Just put them on unwrap decently. Um, do your textures in it with a decent workflow, and you should be able to avoid and fix seams most of the time. So um, onto my metal, I've created a new layer, and I'm doing a sponge on that. The sponge is one of my favorite filters for creating uh, metal surfaces. It just has this sort of uh, different sort of. It's not an exact noise. It just has this color variation that that's interesting for metal. I think it looks really a lot like uh, like hammerite paint. Um, even though the rims aren't hammerite, I think it'll fit this metal. So I created this um, sponge layer, and note that I turned it down to some extremely low opacity to keep it subtle. I am painting some more dirt on my metal, uh, and I'm doing this in the parts that are more occluded. Because it's more occluded, there will be less water, less wind, and dirt will tend to uh, stick around there more. So, just adding some slight grunge all over. I concentrated mostly on the rubber, so now I'm concentrating more on the um, on the metal. And doing an extra noise, but doing a motion blur now. And what the the reason for this motion blur is is um, I'm using this to simulate um, to create some sort of. Uh, um, brushed metal look. Um, noise with motion blur, that's just how, how, how I do brushed metal, it's the easiest way. And I need to offset the size a little bit because it's stretching there. And also need to um, make sure that, yeah, there we go, that looks okay. I'm gonna have to mask this, there we go, mask it. And it's a little bit too strong on the center hubcap there, I don't really like what it looks like there. Some places it needs to be less. So I'm really toning it down a lot on the center hubcap. It's almost gone there, just slightly left uh, left it in there. Increasing the contrast. Really boost the contrast so you can get the most out of it and set it to a lower opacity. Uh, so that's subtle, but it's still visible. Um, okay, so let's have a look. And yeah, I like how that brushed metal uh, sort of look is working. It works nicely on the uh, the round rims. Yeah, that looks cool. Okay, so. Uh so nice is I'm, I'm keep talking about that color difference in the center of that hubcap. I still need to do that. And one thing I just noticed is that there's a slight seam here. If you can see, it's it's uh it's at in the center left part of the screen now. Slight seam, and I'm fixing that by moving the UVs uh, a little bit. So I'm just selecting these parts moving them down a little bit and uh, since I'm just moving them like I don't know half a pixel or something you I fixed them with UVs um, as I said it seems you can avoid them in, in in ways that don't require any special software or tricks um, so yeah okay that's that's done also Usually I do that right after I create the pattern. I just check for these scenes. This one was so small that I only noticed later on. So now I'm going to create the color difference in the center of the hubcap. And just make it slightly lighter. And it seems like it's not aligning by one pixel. So I'm going to have to scale it up a little bit. Like so. 
Now that I made it lighter, I think the, the dirt in the center is too strong. So I'm using a, uh, an eraser with a flow of 28% to slightly erase the dirt. So it's, it's still there, but it's just a lot more subtle. Okay. And right now I want to try and see if uh, those red colors, if it works. Um, I'm filling a layer with red and checking some blend modes, but it's too dark, it's too light, it looks like shit. So um, I need to try the hue saturation layer. Hue saturation layer is more interesting because you can change the colors a lot more uh, easily. Um, trying to find the right color of red, but I don't know. <laughs> this doesn't really seem to be working. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of the... Uh, and well let's try if I delete the parts for the for the front wheel let's see if we see what it looks like in 3d I'm not really too convinced of it here and nah <laughs> not, not too fond of it here uh, looks like a clown car or something just the contrast doesn't seem right it looks like black red and white together which is just too much um, I'm just gonna leave it at uh, standard metal colors uh, so one thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm having my diffuse texture give something back to the normal map. The noise I added to the diffuse, I'm going to use it to add some noise to the normal map. So um, there we go. Key here again is setting this extremely subtle. Uh, I'm doing my normal map blend and setting it to 3%. Um, if I would set this higher, it would just look really bad, like, I don't know, stone or, or wood or something, whatever. So you need to keep it subtle if you add these these overlays to your normals. Um, yeah, you might be able to see it on the video if I zoom in a lot. It's really difficult to tell, but uh, it's definitely there and it helps. It looks better with it. It helps set the, um, the rubber and the metal apart. Okay, so I'm saving the diffuse again. And I think my diffuse is done now, so I'm creating an I'm duplicating the diffuse, the entire folder, that's why I create the those those uh, layer folders, renaming it to specular. And here's how I do my specular, because people uh, seem to have trouble with this. I duplicate my entire diffuse, but then I go over them layer per layer, and I edit them, thinking, first of all, how much specular does this need? If it's uh, like the rubber, it needs less specular than the metal. But sometimes it might be the other way around. You might have some, I don't know, um, bright green moss on something, but that doesn't mean it needs to have a lot of bright specular. You turn it, you in, turn the colors down, turn it to black. It helps to turn on the keep layer transparency, and then you can just fill something with black with control backspace. And what I also do is, uh, apart from changing the values, is I change the contrast a lot. It's really important to have a lot of contrast in your specular map. So, for example, the dirt layers, um, I'm moving their opacities up again, so they become really visible. That's the reason I don't destroy the, the opacity on those layers. Another trick to increase opacity is duplicate a layer on top of each other. Uh, it'll just blend on top of each other more and more. And you'll get more uh, more contrast. So, um, yeah, what I did here is I selected my my base colors, hit Control Shift L to balance out the um, the the values. Because if you have a specular, also very important contrast. It's part of that. It's part of the contrast idea. Is that you use the entire range from black to white. Uh, you really need to uh, need to utilize it. So I turned up my global specular value back to one, and as you can see, the the rubber still has a faint specular that looks pretty good, and the metal has a really strong specular. So I think the rubber needs to be a little bit stronger. It's a little too faint. Yeah, that's looking better. Uh, also, see the glossiness for the metal. It's it's uh, it's not good. It's it's too too wide, too big. Uh, it's okay for the for the rubber, but not for the metal. So I'm gonna have to create a glossiness map after this. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so, oh, actually, we're gonna do it now because the specular looks okay. So anyway, um, 
one thing I want to do also before I tackle the glossiness is the reflection map. Um, I want the metal from the rim to reflect, but I don't want the rubber to reflect. So I have to create a new layer, which is uh, based on the specular layer. And uh, this new layer has strong reflections for that light center of the hubcap because it's chrome. Um, fainter reflections for the metal around it. And no reflections for the black of the uh, of the rubber. So I'm turning that all the way down. There we go. As you can see, all the rubber is black, and only the metal parts are showing on this reflect texture. So it's a mask that, like reflection, tells the shader, my own shader. Um, what part should reflect more? First of all, I'm choosing an HDRI image, a uh, cube map, because if you want, met want to have metal, you need to uh, reflect something decent. So anyway, it's not showing. I need to change the options a little bit. You can see the reflection showing up. I'm going to blur them a little bit more. And this is really starting to look like metal. Especially the reflections help sell it. Um, they're a really big part of my shader uh, and if you would put this sort of thing in Unreal you can do the same thing there um, because you can build custom shaders there other than that it's it's up to what your engine supports but reflect maps should should be okay if an engine supports uh, reflections um, so it's looking okay one thing I want to work on now is the uh, glossiness because as you can see, the glossiness isn't correct on the chrome and uh, the metal yet. Looks okay on the on the rubber. So glossiness is just a texture that uh, that tells the shader how sharp the um, the speculars will be. Also, glossiness is a really simple texture. It's just some solid colors. Um, you can keep the dirt on it, but it, it's not even necessary. Um, it's mostly about because you you you'll hardly be able to tell. Uh, for that reason, you can keep the glossiness map lower resolution than other maps. Um, okay, so uh, for glossiness, it's important that you use the entire range. I want to have the sharpest glossiness on that white hubcap chrome part, and I want to have the blurriest, uh, widest glossiness on the black parts of the rubber. Um, so. That's how I'm spacing my, my glossiness map in terms of values. The dirt can be a little bit blurrier. Saving this as gloss. Gloss really doesn't require a lot of work. The glossiness texture. And now those those level and offset parts are what can control what the white and black glossiness map values will be. Level is what will be in the white and offset is what will be the black glossiness value. And everything uh, between that just interpolates uh, in value. I turn on use gloss map for blur and that seems to look okay but maybe it's a little bit too sharp whatever I'll just leave it like that for now okay so right now I'm just um, twirling around my model a little bit to to look at it from all angles decide if it looks okay as I said, it's important to do that, uh, just so you can you can see any potential problems. Think if from this angle it might need to uh, require some work there. So anyway, that's it for this video, and see you in the next one.